Activision's fans, Ready Player Willie, with an early character review for Raph, the new character, added to Global this week, accelerated on the timeline, as we're all well aware at this point. But we know enough about it, there's no reason not to dig in already. Today's going to be pretty straightforward. The character overview, the base and total stat analysis, looking at all the metrics about her, leading up to the report card where we can look at those stats, compare them to the kit, contextualize them a little bit, give my general thoughts after to hit on some things that I think everyone should be knowledgeable about, the passives and counters, job abilities and auto priority, and then looking at the TMR, the job vision cards, the S percentages, and some weapon optimization as well. So kicking things off today, the character overview, brand new dark unit added to the game. They've given her the unique main job of Warrior of the Crystal Dark. Very creative, Gumi. They've also given her the Scholar and Spellblade sub jobs as well. She does equip maces as her primary weapon with hats, cloths, and accessories with a move of three, jump of one, as yet again, another 100 cost unit. Now, I do think she is a 97 faith candidate, but kind of similar to Dialdo, and I will put that video link in the description below talking about all the faith scenarios. I do think it's debatable whether you go 50, 70, 97 faith, but me personally, I think 97 is just fine. Now we look at the metrics about the kit. Her max range is five squares away, very similar to most characters. She has one AOE ability on that main job, but three single target attacks. Now for the weapon type resistance, there's a lot of very strong ones here. 25% to strike is your most powerful niche, but 15% to both slash and magic. Those are currently kind of the three most popular damage types we're seeing on global. She is 10% positive to missile with only minus 5% as that pierce weakness. But overall, this is exceptionally strong for her effective HP, as we'll see in a couple slides here. Now, because she is a 97 faith unit, theoretically should be cognizant of which ailment she can be afflicted by, and she does resist 50% to both paralysis and confusion, 10% to slow. The slow one is definitely one that we've seen an uptick in. The other two are fine. You don't really see as often, though. It could be a little bit better, but overall, not the worst thing in the world. We look at the mastery ability and the dream ability. Unique to her on the mastery is 5 and 8 AoE resistance and also 5 hate to start the battle. Exceptionally important, as we all know at this point, for tanks. And for the dream ability, they give her 10 unit resistance and crit evade of 10, which is kind of interesting. They do some little games with her luck stat that we'll see in just a slide here. Now, for the base stats, she is essentially the second highest base HP in the game. Very, very high. Obviously, a really strong thing you like to look for. She is being a mace wielder, a magic oriented character. Now, the base magic stat, though, is obviously on the lower side of things. Not terribly surprising. Tanks aren't really known to do exceptional amount of damage by and large, and she's kind of more of that bruiser, bulkier tank. And so that magic stat is uh, not really her strong point. That's totally fine. The agility definitely on the lower side of things as well. And then finally, the dexterity and the luck. The dexterity may be just a smidge below average. Not really known for her crit hit rate, but the luck also not bad, just a bit above average. But what I think Gumi tried to do here with that 10 crit evade on the dream is that they did not want to give her any kind of potential evasion where she, there are some dark units that have teammate buffs to boost evasion. And so to kind of taper her potential and not making her dodge more hits, they probably played some games here where they gave her the 10 crit evade in lieu of going for some higher luck overall to kind of counterbalance that. That's just my guess. Now, as we transition those charts into kind of seeing the summary snapshot here, those stats compared to other UR units, again, HP is off the charts. Luck is very strong to start out with here. But as we add some of the board nodes, the mastery abilities, things of that nature, there are some changes here. Really noteworthy is just that everything gets a little bit worse now everything's still fine at the end of the day the tank's job is not stat reliant it is ability reliant she's no different from that when we look at the source of some of these stats really nothing pops off the charts here they emphasize some of the extra hp they gave her an average amount of agility they really jipped around the decks though uh, that's a significant fall off there from where she started out based stat wise so yeah not a crit hit unit and the luck stats fine relatively average and we start looking at some of these other stats here now the agility with those 15 percent and eight percent vision cards overall without her passive equip that gives her agility she does skew on the below average side here coming in at roughly 73 or so versus the average of 77 uh, and even with that passive she is still relatively slow comparatively speaking but again for a tank that's not terribly surprising i don't think she's too slow it's just that she does uh, really require that passive to kind of keep up with the turn order of your average units but we'll dive into more of that soon from the crit hit and crit avoid again dexterity is not there there's no crit rate node she is not a crit hit unit don't worry about that the critical avoidance rate really gets 10 percent here from that dream ability there without that she would be a little more toward the middle of the pack and so obviously crit avoidance rate is above average a good starting spot as well 
We look at the accuracy. Uh, not a very innate accurate unit, though, and that's fine. She does have a guaranteed hit in her kit, though. She also does have a 20% accuracy passive, though, that gets her more toward the middle of the pack accuracy, but really not enough to hit evasion, in my opinion. So, uh, really, that accuracy is kind of misleading here from the 20% extra perspective. But again, having a guaranteed hit is really all you need as a tank anyway, so I think she's fine in that regard. And then finally, the evasion here, not even remotely close to the evasion gradient, which, again, I think they've kind of done that to balance her to make sure that she never evades any abilities but yeah not an evade unit in the least and so when we get to the report card here again this is kind of tough to grade because we're trying to grade her versus other tanks we're also trying to grade her versus other characters in general but i'll try to contextualize all this the effective hp is an a here uh now she's not the bulkiest tank effective hp wise in the game there are certainly characters that are better than her she does have 14 defense innately for spirit innately and she will get 15 defense on her main passive so you can really think of her defense as about 29 at the minimum she does have an innate 5 aoe resistance she'll get 8 more from her weapon for a total of 13 and 10 unit resistance as we already saw as well so overall effective hp again not the bulkiest tank in the world but these are some really good starting spots for her in general the survivability though really kicked things up a notch i'm giving her an a plus here she has a counter ability that reduces all slash damage by 20 percent she is re-raise capable she's got a 50 percent general barrier her main buff is 15 percent light and dark res as well she's also got a 40 percent heal back when she falls below half health and she gains 25 aoe resistance upon being re-raised there's even more about her survivability that we'll talk about in a couple slides but overall a plus up and down everything you could possibly think of she basically has and not even listed here is that uh, her secondary buff is a debuff weakening of 50%, so it will reduce how much she gets imperiled by. So yeah, there's even more that I can possibly fit into these bullets, but we'll see that throughout the presentation as we continue to go here. Now damage, I'm going with a C. She does get 20 magic res pen on the weapon, which is kind of nice, but no spirit penetration innately. She's mainly confined to magic type attacks, which is fine. They all are dark oriented. There's no elemental list attacks that some dark characters have. So overall damage, not going to blow you away, but for a tank, she's basically average. Nothing terribly bad there. Now agility, I'm going with a C minus though, where innate agility, if you don't equip her passive, is 73 versus the UR average of 77. With that passive, she's still not at the average. She, she's still a couple points below, but at least 79 is workable. Even 73 is fine, but definitely on the slower side of things. So agility, going with a C minus here. The accuracy, I'm going with a D. You have that accuracy 20 passive, but really not going to be using that at all. The guaranteed hit on 120 is a redeeming quality for her though. So overall, as long as you keep that in mind, that's all you really need to know. The evasion, I'm going with a D plus here, not an evade unit as we saw on that chart of gradient of potential evasion as well. The movement, I'm going with a C plus here. She does have jump plus one capability on her agility pass, which you might have on a majority of the time. Although jump plus one is awesome, I do think move plus one is better, quite frankly. But jump plus one has shown time and time again that that also is still important just for making sure that you can you know, more easily cross from A to B against different map topographies. Now, the auto ease of use, I'm going with an A here. There is not much to consider in her builds or usage. Nothing to really watch out for, for weaknesses. You really just set one or two buffs. There's no weird team eight movement. There's no weird confusing priority. There's no abilities that require any extra thinking. You can really put her in the battle, build her up the way you might with a stereotypical tank, and she's going to perform that job 95% of what is maximally capable anyway. The game disruption, though, I'm going with an a minus and i'm throwing a small asterisk on here talk about why overall game disruption really is an a she's a stellar addition to dark she's supremely well-rounded i think she's an objective upgrade to Dwayne, who is exceptionally good still he had nothing wrong with Dwayne, but she's just better the asterisk though why i go from a to a minus is because the greater demon will vastly change the results you experience with her both the vision card and the esper those that those two things greatly elevate wrath so if you pull her and don't pull those she's still going to be fine but not nearly to this level of disruption you might have seen or heard about in jp now passive abilities going with a b plus here great main passive it's fine a decent decently good secondary options really not much i would improve upon but there's nothing that blows you away either per se the counter ability is going with an a minus here very strong main counter to reduce that slash damage by 20%. This bullet is a little incomplete. It's, it's slash damage specifically, not all damage, but that is 
one of the most popular damage types in the game at the moment, so still very strong as we know. The overall drop in kit, going with an A. Fantastic utility to mix in with that survivability. You love to see that in all of your modern tanks. Tanks are much more than just a meat shield at this point. They typically have to, you know, supply some kind of advantage to the battlefield or enable teammates, and she does that very, very well. For a final grade of an A, I don't think anyone's surprised here. Very few downsides. You do kind of require this like new age of units to compete with her. And I'm going to talk about all of those things on the next slide here in the general thoughts. But I'd call her a meta defining unit, but Dark is already pretty meta defining on her own. She's just going to accelerate that in its own sense. And as Bridal Alaya comes out and some of the hype around her and strike damage overall and people may be going toward that uh, build, Raph is prime to fight against that incoming meta as well. So could even be higher than an A. I don't know. I very rarely give away the S grade though but definitely definitely one of the top tier units in the game now for my general thoughts overall when i talk about those new age of units competing with her let's talk a little bit about things all throughout her kit her limit break extends chain duration let's talk about that briefly here before the abilities what that means is as your character gets hit a couple times they build up those chains right normally when they move again the chains revert to zero and you have to start that chain all over again her limit break makes it so that even though your character moves, they retain the chain on them still. So your dark units can continue the chain even after that character has acted for one turn. So for those characters that have chain reduction as a kind of survivability, they are primed to compete with her limit break and being able to mitigate some of that extra damage it's going to allow. Now the main AoE ability she has is a quad break. It's defense and spirit and attack and magic. So we've seen this new debuff reduction or like the potency reduction. Yeah, if you're getting imperiled by four different things, being able to reduce the amount of that imperil or having that defense or spirit debuff res 100%, which some characters do, very important to make sure that this doesn't allow her teammates, Sephiroth and whoever else, to amplify their damage on you. Same thing with her 120 ability, which is a dark imperil of 25%. Same concept. Those that have that debuff potency are going to fare better with this or those that have debuff reduction of 100% on certain things obviously fare very well also. Now, the 50% barrier is a general barrier she gives to herself. Again, most characters need a barrier break of some kind in this game, so that's kind of one of those new minimum requirements. The 40% heal back that she gives herself, so you want healing power down, which many of the new characters have in some regard. She's also got that 100% chance of reducing all slash damage by 20%. So reduce counter chance, very, very important to contest with that. And the re-raise that she has, you need remove re-raise to be able to get rid of that. So there's like five or six things here that her kit does that many of the new characters have in some kind of shape or form that you really need a whole team in order to work together to take her down using all of these things here that she offers for enabling teammates, but also her own survivability. Now for the excellent team utility I talked about, you talk about that elemental chain duration extension. There's the defense and spirit break, the shell removal, and she also has courage removal on that same ability as we'll see. There's a dark imperil, and her main sub job does have a very strong curative potential as well, so to keep that in mind. Now the mace that they've given her is an excellent job choice as a rainbow potential tank where we've seen with Dialdo being Pierce as well, uh, these tanks getting away from those sword classes allows them to be intermingled with a lot of other characters that you may not have had, you know, times two previously because of the job based vision cards and her having a mace very very good thing same thing as a magic scaling unit adds for a lot of vision card flexibility which we'll talk about again in a second here but the greater demon really going back to this here is a massive upgrade for her not only is the vision card 10 aoe res extra it's three agility extra which you saw is one of her grades that she's a little bit lower on it also gives her healing power up which is a global exclusive buff which affects how much that heal back does it also affects how much health she re-raises with so that's a huge upgrade there and the esper also gives five aoe res too so if you don't have greater demon you're losing out on 15 aoe res and the three agility and the healing power up already in addition to the party effects of 24 percent slash res 16 percent strike res and 50 percent agility to the party this is a very very strong party buff to make sure she maximizes encountering who she is supposed to now the exceptional vision card flexibility kind of talked about this dark has two unit res cards there's two aoe res cards there's one agility card and mace has one aoe res card and 
two agility cards and this is looking toward jp a little bit in a future look so in a week or two as we catch up to them you're gonna have a ton of vision cards to build around with her so that's a really really strong thing for her and it's extremely hard to make some of her resist go negative and that debuff weakening buff as we saw is a big part of that too and when you talk about doing the maximum potential amounts of damage that's typically a threshold where if you can make someone go negative, you start to amplify the damage you do to them. And so the fact that she has 29 defense innately plus some with the Esper means you're very likely not going to imperil her defense ever. Having that, you know, 40 to 50% slash res and the 40 to 50% strike res means you're never going to imperil those and make them go negative either. And even for like the magic res and that missile res, if you build up those resistances, that debuff weakening reduces the imperil percentages so even those you have a chance that they may not go negative so overall there's a lot of things about her survivability that are very difficult to do make her a really good tank now look at the passive abilities her main one here i rule the eternal knight that's 12 percent hp five extra hate for a total of 10 hate uh, in the battle to start we know that kind of hate is very very strong that you cannot dispel it so she's going to have five hits before someone else on her team gets hit and that's the extra 15 defense i am partial to which of the darkness here for that 12 percent agility as we saw that's a pretty big difference in getting her up to speed with the average unit the jump plus one all also very very good for her mobility overall but i do think there's a time and place where maybe you do go blessing of the light spirit depending on that matchup and even preliminary chanting we're going to talk about cast times which is second here there is a chance or a time where this actually might be best too now I, I don't think it's better than witch of darkness but there's something to be said about that cast time down and then finally scholar's knowledge is fine the 12 defense is fine accuracy of 20 is fine but i think her defense level is high enough already that I don't think that extra 12 is really going to make a, a whole big difference. It's really the accuracy, and even then, she's got the guarantee hit. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Now, for the counter abilities, that Dark Shield is really the best one here. It's a 100% chance to reduce all slash damage by 20%, so very, very strong unless you have reaction block rate as a slash unit. That being said, she technically does have Magic Guard here as well. If you are going into a different meta where 20% chance to reduce the magic damage by 45%, that's very strong. I don't think the counter action is all that great, but Dark Shield top one here is by far the best and really good for a lot of the meta units now for the main job buffs her primary one that she uses first is immortal wall it's the second one here that's that 50 percent general barrier it's light and dark res for 15 percent. so not only is that strong obviously against light but helps that mirror matchup dark versus dark it also gives her re-raise and when she does re-raise she gets 25 aoe res for three turns as well the secondary buff here is that hp heal back and the debuff effect weakening of 50 percent for three turns so getting both of these off obviously make her supremely hard to take down so I would do whatever I can to make sure that she can always get both of these off at the same time, at least in one battle. Now for the main job, offense of four different abilities here. Again, kind of just looking at the summary of them. They're all dark oriented. They're all magic oriented. You have one big diamond AOE. You have three unit res ones as well. There's some good height flexibilities here where you can get up to range height of two. Just going through these individually, Black Yume is an extra healing power, which again does amplify her re-raise and affects her heal back. So if you can somehow get this off early or late in the fight, definitely will help that overall. Iagato is the best ability here though. It's that big diamond where that's that defense and spirit break of 20 it's a double hit for some extra chain potential as well the attack and magic debuff is a sneaky decent as well where again you talk about trying to kill her well if you're getting your attack and magic lowered that means less damage she's taking so this is great for a whole variety of reasons not even for just herself but even for teammates that if her teammates are nearby her and people are attacking that that break of the attack and magic obviously helps teammate survivability as well the Liberation from Life, this is cast time 320, or it's the only ability with a cast time. All four of these are reflectable, though, or runicable, if you're thinking of Celeste. This Liberation from Life is a shell dispel and dispel courage as well. And finally, the Witch Strike is that 25% dark imperil that also functions as the 100% hit chance. So a lot of well-rounded things here overall to get the damage she wants done while littering in some good utility here. And as we talk about the cast times, looking specifically at that 320, there's four hypotheticals we're going to talk through right now. So again, the way cast time works, you start at 1,000, and every time you decrease it by a certain amount, the game functions in ticks whenever it calculates who the enemy's turn is and when the spell goes off. And there's a whole other video to talk about this so i'm sorry i'm giving you the, the summarized version of this but the way i've set this up you have the two abilities on the main job the main sub job death's god's judgment which we haven't seen as an ability yet is on the main sub job in the slide here the rest of these are the scholar 
So primarily the most important one we want to focus on is liberation from life because that's one that's always going to be on the main job. If you decide to do no cast time down whatsoever, that's going to take four ticks to go off. Four ticks is exceptionally long. The sweet spot for a mage is really two ticks nowadays, if not fast, if you can help it. Three ticks, maybe, but there are some serious deficiencies by doing that. But there is a really easy way you can add some cast time down, and that is on a trust stone passive. So should you reduce that cast time down to 800, are there any thresholds that change? And the answer is yes, both of the main job thresholds change from four ticks down to three ticks and the technically law of geoabsorption does too where it goes from five ticks to four ticks spoiler alert though i don't think law of geoabsorption is nearly as good as people think it is it's always kind of underachieved it's been very niche in exactly how good it can be so i wouldn't let this affect your thinking with the cast time down i'd really just focus on the liberation from life as the primary ability now there are other ways to further decrease that one of them is that passive ability for the extra 200 and if you do that you do meet another break point for liberation of life that now goes down to two ticks if you have the trust stone passive and her job passive equipped and theoretically all of the scholar sub job ones also go down a whole nother tick so if you are using that sub this combination is very very good for that as well but then finally there is technically a vision card you can use it's really just a question of if it further breaks a break point and that vision card is a hundred cast time down if you're wondering well what are you talking about it's actually the becoming stronger than anyone else now i don't necessarily recommend this but this is unit res 20 for dark units on a vision card so if you are going into some kind of magic party this actually does have a potential use i'm not saying it's going to define anything i'm not saying you should use it or that you have to use it but just to know that it exists if you do have that cast them down of 100 does it change any break points the answer is like not really it only changes the death god's judgment so again not a strong recommendation to do so i think the sweet spot is really having the trust stone passive and and maybe having the pass one it's really debatable though i think you can probably be just fine using it for three ticks here in the second scenario that's obviously subjective to whatever you're doing now the limit break let's talk again a little bit about what this is that's 69 ap very large diamond again five squares away same as the main job ability it's the highest mod in the kit this will extend that elemental chain on units so again if you start chaining on a character they act it will not wipe their slate clean and bring them to zero it will retain whatever chain you last left off on so they're going to get obliterated on the next hit very very good limit break for enabling your teammates and then when you consider other abilities it's really just the eldira vision card here i don't think this is a strong ability though it's basically pretty redundant with what her main diamond ability does in the attack and magic debuff the immobilize is kind of a cool angle considering she's 97 faith so maybe that works but overall not a strong thing to consider and there's a variety of other vision cards to use so not recommended now for the sub job the crystal warrior dark i do really like the sub job for two reasons number one this healing in pitch black that is a massive cure of 210 modifier while yes it is a teammate buff that you have to walk to a teammate you can get kind of weird with some movement there that's a strong curative potential the death god's judgment i don't hate this ability though 25 percent chance to inflict doom can be sneaky good really just a question on if your battle is won or lost before the doom even applies um, I think this is probably better for more manual options that if you consider the AI rotation, she's probably using limit break first, then she's probably using the imperil ability second, then she maybe uses this one. And by that time, your fight's basically coming close to one or lost. By the time you use this and then wait another four turns for the doom to kick in, probably already over at that point. But the range height of two is kind of nice when you talk about being able to hit of different uh, trajectories it's really just a question at the end of the day is this better than the other sub jobs and i think it's kind of debatable i think i prefer this one if only for the curative potential here but looking at the scholar again i don't think there's really anything here that's significantly different than the main job i think steadfast law which is that primary scholar buff is a very strong buff i don't think it's better than the two main job buffs though so unless you're on a map where you can buff three times i think this ends up being inferior to the other two and i'm personally not all that high on law of geo absorption i think it's fine i think people overrate it a little bit though i think her main job functions more seamlessly than anything here on the scholar sub job plus you have to consider all the cast time stuff just not worth it but finally the spell blade this is the only other thing i would consider and it's really for the taunting blade here or the attraction blade whatever it is that she only has that 10 hate innately this is an opportunity to jack up that hate even more now here's the thing it's still a range of five so it's the same range as the diamond ability it's only 121 percent mod so it's likely not going to get used instead of the other one if it does it's likely because your team is stacking a bunch of slash attack modifiers 
But even then, because of that magic res pen on her mace, I think it's debatable whether or not she even uses this in the majority of instances. If she does, it's more than likely because of the AoE height of 2, that there's some weird height thing going on that she's able to use it. But I do like this option that, yeah, you can add on to that hate. I think it's a very viable thing. It's really just a question of whether or not it's better than the curative potential on the main sub. And so for Guild Wars, the curative potential is probably better. But for Arena or one-time battles, I think Spellblade is probably the choice to go. So... Overall thumbs up for this choice as well. Now the TMR review. This is definitely a, a niche TMR. Number one, I like it. It's an accessory. If it was a cloth, it'd be awful. But accessory with 10 defense, 3 agility, 2 usages. It's the max HP and HP restored of 25%. We've seen a couple of these recently. Ferris has a similar effect here. This effect is not all that bad. The increase with jump of 1 is fine, but there's a lot of other TMRs that are able to amplify the jump. They also typically amplify the move, though. It's usually move 1 and jump 1. So this is maybe just a little bit of a different strategic choice where you only want to affect your jump. But even that, I don't know if the max HP of 25% is all of that strong. It's fine. Probably not going to see a lot of usage, though. Now, for the job-based vision card, this is where, again, she gets a lot of extra flexibility. These are some future vision cards that we're seeing here. But you have all the things you want here in terms of agility, AOE, res, unit res, that you can make a mace job. It's just going to be a couple weeks here until we catch up to JP. But the rest of these two, these are obviously also some very good vision cards. I think she's primed to reach a different ceiling than most other characters can because of these now the esper synergies this again is totally subjective dependent upon the matchup because she is a tank the number one priority is living it's not offensive modifiers it's really just what element res do you need or what kind of weapon res do you need and for that i'm just going to kick things off here with the greater demon again emphasizing why this puts her on a different level you get five aoe res from this she gets further strike res which kind of stomps on that niche uh, that not every tank has access to she gets a bunch of extra defense potentially you can go crit evade if you want to swap some of these nodes up still you do also have light res access you can also go for more crit evade or just go dark attack as well either way this is a great esper for her but outside of that i'm not going to give any recommendations because it's 100 subjective to who you're trying to block out from the enemy team and finally, for the weapon optimization, I don't think there's any further to look than this for the mace. I think the magic build is just fine here. The accuracy and crit rate are kind of whatever. I'm kind of surprised they even put that in there. They're, they're pretty mundane. They're likely going to get cut in half because of the trust stones that you're going to have on. But when you look at the abilities of the cards, yeah, that's 20 magic attack res pen. Certainly nice that she doesn't have to use a trust stone passive for it. 8 AoE resistance is a very, very good thing. And the healing power of 15 is very, very strong because, again, you don't need to worry about a trust stone passive for that. It is technically a small upgrade of 15 versus the 10, but by having this on all the time, regardless of your trust stone passive, it's not only going to affect the healing she receives, it's going to affect how much healing she does on that heal back when she falls below half health so it's going to affect how much healing she does upon re-raise as well as that curative potential from the sub jump so this is like right down the middle everything she wants from a weapon overall two thumbs up for it and that's the wrath character review in a nutshell again i don't think there's any surprises here i think there's a good reason why everyone was waiting for her and hoping to use that viz stash to try to pull her i know we're in a tough place right now with the or the road to worldwide and how strapped everyone is i do think she's still a good investment that being said i also think Dwayne has been very very solid for dark i think most people will likely still get a ton of usage out of Dwayne, even if you pass on wrath but for those that do go for her, she's definitely Definitely the next level of tank that you're going to get a lot, a lot of long time usage out of. We've talked about not only with Dark, but with the Rainbow teams. There's a whole lot of opportunities for her that most tanks don't get access to. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll talk to you all soon.